Nocturnes are among the most popular kinds of classical piano pieces in our culture, but how did they come to be that way? I'm the Classical Nerd, and today we're talking about nocturnes. Unusually for musical forms, or even musical terms, the name Nocturne comes from the French, with Nocturno being the Italian version. Nocturnes started as paintings that simply evoked some aspect of the night, until the Irish composer John Field began applying the title to a set of piano pieces that he was writing. His nocturnes are gentle, quiet pieces that feature song-like melodies over a repetitive and rocking bass line. They weren't all that far removed from some other popular pieces and forms of the era. They were basically these slow character pieces, but they became popular in salons, where most of the non-flashy piano music was played. Fields nocturnes are generally in ABA form, meaning that the music that starts out the piece ends up coming back at the end in order to give the piece an overall sense of roundness and completion. Enter Frédéric Chopin. Chopin's melodic and harmonic innovations were the perfect fit for a form that Field had pioneered. While Chopin's not known for long pieces where you can do really interesting things with musical form, he was still able to mix things up enough within the small space of the nocturne, the small canvas, if you will, of this form, in order to make the nocturne as much his, if not more his, than it was Fields. Chopin was absolutely in love with the sound of the human voice, specifically the bel canto style of operatic singing that had come out of Italy around the same time. Bel canto, which means beautiful singing in Italian, had these gloriously flowing melodic lines, and they were highly, highly embellished, both of which served to influence the melodies that Chopin would write in his nocturnes. Most people think the nocturne basically ends with the death of Chopin, but this isn't entirely true. As music history trudged on, composers began rethinking what exactly a nocturne was, and while many composers were fine to have them as short, beautiful little piano pieces, many other composers decided to take their own spin on things. Claude Debussy's orchestral nocturnes are not necessarily evocative of nightly quiet. Rather, they're based on paintings of scenes of the night, which means that the second movement has especially loud and boisterous moments you would not get in any other kind of nocturne theretofore written. Bella Bartok did not write nocturnes per se, but he was fond of something he called night music, which was full of creepy little motifs and sparse textures, making it sound like you were listening to a field of crickets at night. The sole nocturne of the obscure Russian composer Alexei Stanchinsky has a dense, stormy, and outright nightmarish middle section while the Due Nocturne Crudeli of Salvatore Chiarino aren't even recognizable as nocturnes at all, yet they retain the title. It's really unfair for a composer to call a piece a nocturne if it doesn't have at least some tenuous connection to the night, but like everything, this definition has been stretched. Nevertheless, from Field to Chopin to Debussy to Eric Satie, composers have called upon the nocturne to write some of the most tender and heartfelt music. Music 